Alright, hey guys, welcome back to episode 5 of Let's Play Rogue Legacy. Uh, let's get started here, choose our heir. We've got a Dextrocardia Paladin, an Ambilifus Assassin, and a Gay Paladin. Hmm. Well. Spells don't matter that much for Assassins, but they're still not that great at this point in the game. I think I'm gonna go with the Gay Paladin. Because, you know, Gay Paladin. Uh, Alright, I was gonna check and see if the Blood Cape did what I thought it did. Night Cape is really good, I'm gonna unlock it, probably for Assassin, but n not use it for anything else. Okay, the Blood Cape is just a normal blood item, so I don't care about it. But let's see what else we can spend on this 700 gold on that's directly relevant to us. We could upgrade the Barbarian and get more of the tree, which is always good. We could... Actually, I think the best use of our money is getting this attack upgrade. Not only because it's the most money that we can spend, but also because attack upgrades are just always good. Oh yeah, you see that one light on the door? There's four lights on the door, and when they all light up, the door opens, and that's how you get to the final boss. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it feels good to be able to one-hit things. Go back and clear the room. My first real introduction to roguelike games was. Ooh, that's scary. Was The Binding of Isaac. Like, I played actually games that were more roguelike than The Binding of Isaac, but like that particular genre of more randomly generated but only sort of um, was The Binding of Isaac. And uh, in that game, you have to completely clear rooms before you're allowed to move on to the next room. So it was weird in this game, at first, that you don't have to completely clear rooms. You can totally just run through the levels to find things that you want. Um, and I think that's a neat option, actually, because sometimes you don't want gold, sometimes you just want to find the boss and get there with as much remaining HP as possible. And I think it's cool that they let you do that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Eh, no, I guess my goal right now is getting gold still. Not quite powerful enough. I'd like to have Hokage before I fight Alexander. That's the boss of the forest. Because Alexander is really hard <laughs> without having uh, the damage boost that Hokage provides. I think it might actually be past the Barbarian upgrade in the tree. <laughs> So that's probably what I should be saving for now. And I think I actually... I definitely have enough to upgrade Barbarian, because that was 500-something. And I don't remember how much Hokage costs. It's probably on the same order as Skull Thief, meaning probably around 1,000. So I likely won't be able to do, to do both upgrades at once. Let's see if there's anything down here that's easy. That's not easy. This is a little bit... Nope, that's not easy, that's a ninja. Ninjas are like the opposite of easy. Well, this is a remarkably dense darkness. Take no damage. No thank you. If I had the assassin, maybe. Should have taken the assassin. <laughs> talking about. Oh yeah, how much Hokage costs. Um, yeah man, that class is... That class comes at the perfect point in the game where you're like, man, I wish I was doing more damage and then all of a sudden here's a class where you just do more damage. I, at the expense of crits, of course, but crits aren't that valuable this early in the game. It's kind of it's kind of sad though because the only capes of any utility that you get early in the game. Ah, no, I want my monies. All the capes that you get that are useful in any way early in the game uh, are useful because they give you crit stats, 
and the Hokage can't use them. So you're basically stuck with either no cape or a useless cape or the blood cape. Nope, nope, nope. Ah. Well, we can unlock Barbarian King and get a little bit further along the way to Hokage. Archmage, Archmage, aw, oh, three Archmages. Okay, well, what have we got? Time Stop, Blade Wall, and Scythe. I guess Scythe? Sure. Yes. Oh, I hate Archmages so much. Farodus! Shinobi! That's what it's called. The Hokage is the upgraded version of the Shinobi. Super fast, deadly warrior. Oh, and there's crit chance. Haggle is a weird upgrade because you don't really care about the money that you give to Karon. Like, the giving money to Karon is more of a thing to force you to spend all of your money after each run than to actually, like, siphon money away from you. It's less of an obstacle and more of a... Or it's le it's less of an obstacle that's intended to be an obstacle and more of an obstacle intended to compel you to this, towards a certain style of play. Um, and, like, no matter how much gold he takes, you still want to make sure you spend most of what you get in a run so that he doesn't take a whole bunch from you. Like, even if he takes 10%, that 10% that's left, or... Yeah, even if he takes... Even if you could get him down to only taking 10%, it would still be better to spend that 10% than give it to him. And, like... Your, your goal is... What I'm trying to say is your goal is always to spend all of your money before talking to Karan and going back to the castle. So, reducing how much of nothing you give him isn't really a valuable upgrade, in my opinion. So what's our goal with this run? Uh, I guess farming still? Because, you know, I can debate the efficacy of Haggle all I like, but I should probably still get one tier of it to get further up the tree, which I believe is where Hokage is. And I really would like to have Hokage rather than Shinobi for the Alexander fight. Still no Salos. I really want to fight Salos. Salos is a fun fight. What else have we got here? Flame Barrier, Blade Wall, and Scythe. Good. Oh yeah, Blade Wall is also good against stationary enemies. I mentioned it before, it's good against charging enemies. Also good against enemies that just can't get away. Take no damage. I think I can do this one. Nope! Nope. Not quite. Okay, yeah, I did it good. I did it perfectly the second time. <laughs> oh, I know this room. This is a fun room. Because these guys are not actually that hard to fight, you just have to be patient. Oh, nope. Got greedy. Right, let's see if we get a shinobi. We did get a shinobi, we even got a pretty good shinobi, and we got a spell thief for the first time as well. Ah, let's take the shinobi, let's see if they're as good as I remember. And... did we find any equipment? No, we did not. So, let's take... crit chance, I guess, and see if it gives us more castle? Crit damage. Eh. Oh yeah, see? Like, miners do around 30, paladins do around 40 right now. Shinobi's doing 80. As soon as you notice that, and also that they move faster, and the Hokage has uh, a teleport ability, it's just all amazing. <sighs> just one-hitting everything, like zoom, 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 whack, whack, whack. Ah! He 
just gotta remember that you're not actually invincible. You only feel invincible. It's cool how they designed a lot of these enemies with their attacks, like, either going through or not going through walls. Like, the, the whole reason that, uh... The eyeball enemies are threatening is... Well, there's two reasons. The first is that their attacks go through walls, uh, and the second is that they can aim at you. Um, and then, the, like, those enemies that shoot four shots in the cardinal directions, those guys are balanced by shooting more shots but not being allowed to uh, pierce through walls or... Um, uh, what was the other property I was talking about? Oh my god. Brain. What's what's going on, man? I actually don't remember what I was just talking about. Piercing through walls, and there was... And... Well, I guess it just doesn't fucking... Oh yeah, being able to aim. Right, they can only shoot in the cardinal direction, so they shoot a lot of shots, but... Relatively a lot of shots. Um... But don't get to aim them or threaten past walls. So we're not taking the Archmage. I would like to take the Assassin, but we should take the Spell Thief at least once. And I guess let's get... Let's stick one in crit damage, just in case it unlocks something. It didn't. Okay, so we probably need Haggle to get to the Hokage. So yeah, the Spell Thief has this super neat, like, spell sword, and, um, I forget what the rest of their shtick is. I know that spell swords, the upgraded version, can cast an empowered version of whatever the spell is. Maybe I get MP back for hitting them, hitting things with my sword? I think that's it. In fact, I believe that's the entire premise of the Neo Heater fight, because you fight him with a spell sword. And you do next to no damage with your sword, but you do... Yeah, you get MP back for hitting things. Uh, yeah, you do next to no damage with your sword, but you get Empowered Blade Wall. And since Neo Keter is stationary, it actually does a fair amount of damage. But it also costs a ton of MP, so your goal for the fight is to hit him to restore MP and then uh, cast Blade Wall to do damage. Oh, I guess I have IBS, too. So I fart a little when I jump. <laughs> I think Spell Swords are the best of the casters because they don't suffer from the obvious problem of running out of MP, which is one reason why most other casters are actually pretty bad. But the spells are also just mediocre compared to your sword, in terms of hitbox and speed and precision and all that. Like, I would I would argue that Dagger and Chakram are the only good spells. And Chakram is still iffy at best. It's only really good because it can uh, hit infinitely far away and through walls, which Dagger can't do. And then some other ones are situational, like Empowered Flame Barrier or an Empowered Blade Wall can be useful. Oh, I hate this one. Let's see, the chest is down there, which means we probably want to go down this way. And, oh, this is a hard decision. Left. Right. No! <laughs> shouldn't have chosen so quickly on that last one. It was it was pretty obvious that it was the the leftmost one. I guess this one would have worked too. Oh well, we can live with that one fairy chest. Ah. I'm an adventurer. Fart when I jump, that's how you can tell. Oh god, here we go again! Uh, uh what's that? Helios' Blessing? I actually don't remember what that does.
Maybe it's like, it's not gold gain. Maybe it's like luck up or something, like maybe you just get better rewards for stuff. Does it really not tell you? Do, 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 do. Maybe it gives you haste or like stat upgrades or something. Man, I don't know. Helios, something to do with the sun. Can't think of anything really sun related in this game. Maybe it gives you like magic damage up? <laughs> oh yeah, that thing where it says you conduct electricity really well? That's what's making these downstrike platforms stay open all the time. Kind of a nice... It, it's convenient, but it's not super, like, necessary for anything. Uh, uh... These cannons in this room are so deceptive. Oh, another journal. <laughs> Ironic, considering that I found this in the darkness. Oh yeah, nope, nope, getting out of there. Rooms like that are the reason that you, like, build chest plates. And HP. Ah! I probably should be using spells more, even with non-casters, especially with non-casters, because MP doesn't matter as much with them. But... It's hard to remember, and it's hard to care. Ah! Right, there's nothing up there. Going to the top of this room! No. Hit stun in this game is kind of stupid. It's it's basically you're stunned until you land. And I think that's dumb because if you're stunned until you land and you land on a pit of spikes, then you can't like it's just the game being like haha you lose. Hey, I did it! I don't think I've ever managed to do that before. So, pro tip, you can do that. I don't have enough MP. There we go. And that's what makes the spell sword better than any other caster, is that if you don't have enough MP, you just go smack smack. Instead of going and looking around for potions and stuff. Let's see if we can actually get decently far into the forest this time. Oh no. Oh no. I don't like that room. I want to see if I can find a chest or something. I want more equipment. These guys are really, really annoying to fight. They're actually better to fight with spells. Oh yeah, Chakram's multi-hit properties are something that I like as well. If you aim it just right. But yeah, I think tall guards, the, the dudes with the shields, are nice from a design perspective in that they force a particular movement pattern on you. But when they're just like... They, they shouldn't be normal enemies. They should be like... Or they should, they should never be on their own like that. You should always be fighting them in a situation where the forced movement is actually harmful. Eh... <sighs> That was a really bad death. Uh, Alright, I think that will about do it for this episode. I'm going to stop saying the number at the end because I just forget. Um, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.